All right, so we're here at uh, Linaro Connect. So, who are you? Uh, hi, uh, my name is Amit Kucheria. I uh, lead the technical, uh, the power management uh, working group. So I'm the tech lead uh, for that group. Hi, um, I'm Will Deacon. I work on Linux kernel for ARM and uh, mainly work on ArchArm, ArchArm64 on the core architectural parts. So do you work together somehow? Um, <laughs> we talk to each other on the mailing list, but Amit hasn't been on the mailing list for <laughs> a while away. recently. So. Yeah. So what were you doing here this week? So I was... It doesn't have to be so close, sir. Oh, it has. <laughs> so uh, I was uh, basically... Uh, I had a bunch of uh, sessions about the future of power management on ARM and uh, there's this thing about Big Little that you might have heard of, or heard, or heard of. And so we had a lot of sessions around those and uh, basically I have a great team so it was hands off mostly, they take, take care of most of it. So and you, what do you do? So, um, okay. I've been uh, well, a whole bunch of sessions really. So we have one about ARM64, and the important part about that is we don't have any hardware at the moment. Uh, so it was interesting to see what sort of plans we should have for the SOC support there, because on ARM, um, as you're probably aware, we, we got some stick for the way we laid that out. So now we have the ARM SOC tree, which has cleaned a lot of that up. And do we need the same ARM SOC tree for ARM64? Well, I don't know. We, we've been having some good discussions. We try not to have any SOC code at all for our ARM64, so we, uh, we need to wait and see what happens. So you both, uh, it sounds like working on stuff that's in the horizon, kind of like coming out. Not yet out, right? Yeah. It is. Yeah. So, so how is that to work on that kind of stuff? How do you, what do you Frustrating, because we, we only have software models at the moment. And obviously a lot of, uh, lot of key companies and silicon partners are keeping their, their cards very close to their chest, understandably. And um, it, yeah, <laughs> we, we, we develop on software models. And once we get hardware, that will make it a lot, a lot easier. We're doing slightly better than that because ARM has given us uh, DC2 boards uh, which have big little uh, chips on those. And so uh, we actually get to test a lot of the uh, scheduler code that we are changing on, on these boards. Uh, so yeah, it's not that frustrating, but it, it can be. <laughs> because uh, for some of the things, you can't talk about these things. Yeah. And also, like, we haven't got any power management yet on ARM64 because that's one thing you really can't do with a software model. It's true. You, you can invest perhaps a lot of effort in trying to get some of that technology, no, it, but it, you're never going to. No. You can't mimic the silicon. No. So how would you describe that kind of work that you're doing? Is it awesome? Is it? Uh, oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly it? what I want to do. So I, I mean, I've been working on other stuff this week. So we been, like being frustrated, right? Yeah, yeah. You that's like, what we agree. Yeah, on. We, we like difficult problems, <laughs> things that look like they're impossible. We like broken hardware. <laughs> we like all those kind of hard things. Is that but, the? Sorry, is that the type of work you're doing? Is uh, working on difficult problems? Well, yeah. I mean, most of the kernel stuff's fairly, fairly tricky. I think. Um, well, software in general is not not that easy, but. Um, there was uh, some good talks as well to try and solve some of these hard problems. So Mike Turquette, I don't know if you went to his talk, but he did a really good talk about clocks and how they interact with regulators and how we can try and make a simple, a simple API uh, to use in the kernel. And that again ties into power management and there are lots of bright people looking at this stuff. Fun you bring that up because Mike works for me and uh, he's, he's a maintainer for the common clock tree and uh, yeah, he's, he's trying to create a DVFS API, dynamic voltage and frequency scaling in industry terms, um, to basically scale the frequency of these uh, processors uh, to save power. Right. So what are you looking forward to in the next weeks and months? So I'm, I'm currently working on a, an IO MMU driver, so ARM has come up with this, well they call it a system MMU, and it's, it's quite a lot more general purpose than some of the existing ones that we have, so I'm looking forward to developing that and trying to plumb it into some real hardware, because like, I currently haven't managed to actually get the thing working yet. How about you? I, on the other hand, uh, have a lot of planning to do around how we are going to upstream some of the scheduler changes uh, to the Linux kernel. So we've made a bunch of changes around the way uh, the Linux scheduler treats heterogeneous systems. Big Little, for example, uh, has cores with different capacities, and so the Linux scheduler doesn't understand that at this point, and we have to teach it that. And so uh, we are going to start that upstreaming process very soon. 
So I'm going to worry about that in the coming months. Could you both talk about what you think about Linaro? <laughs> okay, so um, it it's probably worth noting I don't actually, I'm not seconded to Linaro, I, I work for Arm. Um, Arm do have secondees in Linaro, I'm not one of them. I come to these events because it's good to touch base with all the guys here, they've got a lot of good representatives both from the, the open source community and just in general people like different companies. So I think Linaro is a really good kind of melting pot for all of that stuff, getting lots of people who otherwise might not normally work together all into one place and uh, providing a common umbrella for them to, to work underneath. And what do you think? I agree. Uh, it's a great place to work uh, and find uh, maintainers, kernel developers, subsystem developers, all sorts of people who normally wouldn't work together. So the best part about coming to these events is that the hallway conversations, in a sense. I mean, you get a lot of these things sorted out just in the hallway conversations. So I'd say, as, as an outsider as well, it's, it's still important not to, not to keep everything internal. You've got to make sure that there's visibility on, still on the public mailing list and in the open source communities because you, you don't want to make people who aren't here feel like they're being excluded. And I don't think that's happening yet, but it, it's, a, it's a careful line to tread. And, and Lenaro tries to do a good job of that with all the Google Hangouts and all yeah. of that. So a lot of people, if, if the time zone is right, could <laughs> actually dial in uh, and, and listen on and participate in some of these things. So it's great uh, from that perspective. Um, they do miss out on the hallway conversations, but yeah, I mean, you can't make it to every conference every year. But so. I mean, nothing, nothing gets, it's, nothing's final here. So we come up with ideas, we have discussions, and hopefully enough key people are here, and then we have to post patches to the mailing list. And that's where the real beauty of this is. Great point. It goes out Eventually, on a, it's, it's, it's all out for review. It's not, it's, not, it's not like we are making decisions that are, uh, that are standing, I mean, they're binding in a sense, right? So. These are going to go out, be reviewed by other members of the community, so we're not leaving anybody out in that sense. <laughs> you can sometimes get a room full of people that agree on something and you post it and everyone goes, what are you doing? <laughs> Damn it, <laughs> we all thought it was a good idea. So how many people are not here? Uh, so the number we heard was, uh, it was 330 something registered, but uh, about 303, uh, 308 showed up. Yeah. And there was for 40 or something on the spot registrations. But uh, how many are like need this stuff and are not part of Linaro yet? Or oh, I don't think you can quantify that. I mean, the, the Linux community is huge. So a lot of these things that we do isn't just about ARM. I mean, the scheduler changes that we're doing, we believe that they are going to. Uh, improve power management the way the scheduler does uh, scheduling is going to improve uh, normal SMP systems so it's not just about ARM here uh, I mean the Linux community has been solving generic problems it's not just a single architecture so some of the problems are specific to ARM but several of the problems are not so an example you, you talked about Mike right and so uh, He's he's uh, now has a sample Im implementation from x86 for clock, clock framework. Right. So they're, they're solving something that's generic. And Zach was talking about memory hole plug as well, which is an exactly. idea taken from enterprise, so that's supported on x86, improving that to work with mobile because we need it for different reasons, and then hopefully that would improve improve uh, enterprise as well. Cool. All right. Uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. And. Uh, I guess uh, looking forward to your work. Thanks, Charlie.